Does Kyle Shanahan have too much power in the organization? And I bring this up because I feel like this trade for for Christian McCaffrey was a Kyle production yes, and sir. something that, you know, you know, a strong general manager or a strong owner would say, no, we're not going to do the Mike Ditka trade where we trade an entire draft for a running back. And really when Ditka did it, he traded it for a young running back. This is a 26-year-old running back who's missed a lot of games the last two years. This is... um out of character for the 49ers, who usually do trades that Parag Marate would totally sign off on. This is, to me, a Kyle production. Can anyone say no to this guy? Nobody can. No. Nobody can. It's the same thing. It's not only just with the power, it's the same thing with the play calling. And that's where that's where I really think the loss of McDaniel and LaFleur the last two years is felt. It's not so much of how much they can add on to the playbook, but how much they can actually like tell to Kyle since, you know, they've been bros for years. It's like, Kyle, we need to try this. This ain't working. And I bet you Kyle actually like would trust McDaniel. Quick. Okay. But yeah. I mean, it's All right. not like yeah. so much the play calling mm. again. It's just like getting, just telling them like, look, man, put the hand on the shoulder. Like we got to talk about this. We got to try this and that because this is not working. Maybe we could do this different. And I feel conf- I feel like he would never get like take too offense to it because he knows like McDaniel knows my knows the stuff, he's done well. I've trained him. He's done, he's trained himself. He's he, he's brilliant. Where I don't think he's ever gonna re- relinquish power for sure is the personnel decisions because he's like I'm not getting that extension and making all this money if you're not gonna build the team in my image and I can't pass off on it and I can't make my own moves. Like come on, it's like the only time he doesn't care about the trades is like um or personnel decisions when it comes to parts of the draft which maybe is day two and day three because he, he, come on does he care about midday trip picks like that he probably just looks at a little bit like you've said like like a little bit of the film that's like three games worth so i it's it's really too much like that power that that trade really definitely <laughs> demonstrated a kyle shanahan move because only a head coach would do that. and i'm always like opposed on head coaches having totally you know power like that because they make rash decisions it seems like Kyle and his his camp are really taking advantage of Jed, who's weak, because he fired Harbaugh and then hired two duds back-to-back. He made himself the weakest, most incompetent owner in the league. So Jed comes in, I mean, Kyle comes in, and he's like, all right, man, you're going to run me off? You're going to tell say no to me? You're going to alienate me? <clears throat> and Jed so far seems terrified of saying no to Kyle. He's just so happy to have some credibility in the organization. It looks like Kyle has a lifetime contract and can do whatever he wants. And really, the last 20 years, the most powerful man in the organization has been Parag. Parag is in charge of contracts and analytics, and he makes all the big decisions, who stays, who goes, and Jed trusts him. So like when Parag or the analytics department says, hey, let's trade DeForest Buckner, he's really good, but it makes more sense to trade him for a first round pick and get someone who's like, you know, 70% of the player for 20% of the price, that's a total analytics move. Now you got to get the player right when you, you got to scout and develop, but that's not Parag's deal. <laughs> that's the that's coach's staff. So that, that explains DeForest Buckner. And then the Trey Lance move, three first round picks for a quarterback on a rookie contract. That's totally an analytics move. That makes sense. Now you got to get the player right, but that's scouting and coaching. Trading four picks for a running back who's 26, making $12 million a year. No analytics guy would ever do that. The analytics guy would want the op to be on the opposite end. You know, trade. That's the one player Carolina traded. Their running back, who's expensive. They kept J.C. Horn and Brian Burns. Of course they did. They're not stupid. Uh, but I'm not saying Kyle's stupid. But he just didn't listen to the analytics. He's like, I'm a coach. That's a good running back. I want him. Give me the running back. And I can't believe that Parag said, all right. And Jed was like, okay. Like, wow. There are no checks and balances on Kyle in this organization. And if there were, he might just be better. Like, Robert Sala has a strong general manager in in New York. He can't just do whatever he wants. He has to work within the structure of an organization. Kyle is everything. He's the head coach, offensive coordinator, general manager. Frankly, he's the owner of the team. It's too much. Well, Sala came there when the general manager was always already there. That's the thing about when head coaches... Head coaches come in with the GM, you know it's always the head coach. The only time you can get the head coach to actually be like the secondary or the like, you know, like the little deputy to the guy is when the GM's already there. And look, look you look around, there's a lot of head coaches that have that authoritarian to them that has like the full power. And how often does it work? Not, not often. It feels like the only one who really makes it the best is Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick, who's seventy something. Kyle, like, yeah, man. Yeah. We're not yeah. gonna compare him to Bill Belichick. Come on, everyone else. A lot of people do though, and that bugs me. A lot of people do. Colin Cowherd says the best, the, the the young next Bill Belichick, dude. Can he get over five hundred first? Can you win the Super Bowl first? Before? Can you win the Super Bowl first? Like, 
It, it, it's just yeah. it just rattles my brain. And look, I think ultimately, like the, as as bad as the personnel moves are, look, it's 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 ultimately like I want him to win on the field and to actually show his strutted stuff on the field, which is what he gets touted for the most. Which is actually it's kind of funny that he must have so much saying personnel. But I digress. Um, it's it, it's just so much like it's it's just too much power in every single facet. Like, it, it, can anyone I, – I really want the checks and balances more on the field than I do in the personnel department because I think they can overcome certain moves that they bring in the personnel to make up for it so long as they're, you know, being smart what they're doing. We got to talk about why there's no checks and balances, though. Like, what is it about Jed? It's I think some people think, well, he's overcorrecting from the Harbaugh years. That's partially, probably partially true. Like, But the other thing is we don't know how much power Jed has anymore. This is a rumor I heard. Um, just a rumor. That when he wanted to fire, when it was time to fire Chip Kelly, Jed wanted to keep Trent Balky. And his parents came to him and said, no way. You got to start over. We are starting over. So I'm not sure that Jed hired Kyle Shanahan. It might have been like, you know, an organizational hire. Parag, Denise, John, all of them. So I don't know that Jed necessarily has the power to like fire Kyle Shanahan. You know, last year when the season was starting to look a little murky, they were three and five. John York showed up. So this may be Jed's like the face guy and he's here and he's at the he's at the games and he's smiling. How much decision making power does he really have after the Harbaugh, Tom Sula, Chip Kelly debacle? They may have taken that from him. We have no idea how this family works. But I'm thinking Jed doesn't have the power he used to and the owners of this team are in freaking Youngstown and the guy who's running this organization day to day is the head coach. And I, I can't think of another coach in sports who has as much power. I mean, Steve Kerr doesn't have this much power. Joe Lacob is running that team. Steve Kerr has a, a place in it. Nick Sirianni isn't running the Eagles. Howie Roseman runs that team. And for a long time, Parag ran this team for better or worse. And now Kyle Shanahan can veto him whenever he wants. I don't know, man. Jed, D Denise, John, you might want to actually like step in because I think it would benefit Kyle and your entire organization. That makes a lot of sense. I, like, I actually like that theory. That makes sense. Yeah. To me, it's always like, you know, I just don't think he cares anymore. And I mean, after and after all that debacle he created, he's probably scarred. And look, and going circling back to what what uh maybe his thoughts on the Christian McCaffrey trade when he instead of him saying veto, they probably just told him, look at all the jersey sales and the tickets and everything else. We so can get a nice little a nice little spike. But it's like, look, you're already printing cash. Like, how much do you really is Christian McCaffrey really gonna? you know, serve, serve you like a longevity spike. Like you guys are, you guys are making money. You're the San Francisco 49ers, man. You don't need to worry about money. You guys are printing. I know. You guys are a walking Brinks truck. It's a, pathetic, a but you should have seen it the day after they traded for McCaffrey. When I went just for practice, they had yeah, his face like, plastered. Oh, that's why it was like all the marketing. That's why I think that's why when you said that and all the words you just said right now, it's like thinking like, damn, they sold him on that then. And that's what they're trying to push. Maybe I'll maybe that could have been like a deal. Like, look, we're trying to push this because look, when you're an owner, ultimately it's all about sale. I mean, it's about winning as well, and winning comes with, with money. At this, you know, if you're winning, then it's free marketing. You're getting, you're getting all you're getting all that money and stuff like that. But the players also like helps you as well, like getting all these big brands. That's why a lot. Of th that's why I feel like it's nothing with the NBA too about how they get those big stars is to help push their own brand and everything. Also, think about advertising dollars. Like, mm -hmm. the more people are watching your product daily, weekly, the more the more the ad companies will pay to put their ads on your games, on your stadium, right? Like, the views were going down on this team. I saw it on my YouTube channel. Like, it was getting stale. It's the same old shit with Jimmy Garoppolo. They're three and four. People are like, man, I know where this is going. So now you bring in Christian McCaffrey, and it's like, my YouTube views are back up. Like yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure their YouTube views are back up, and I'm sure ad companies are looking. I'm like, okay, let's let's invest back in the Niners again because people are watching their shit. They're relevant, so it's that's important to them because they they're not wealthy wealthy like the Rams. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, no, no. they're not. Chris Christopher says, why not ask Kyle Shanahan straight up? Did you ever truly like Trey Lance as a football player? What would he say? Personal what would he say? That. Of course he would. Of course I did. I love Trey. Be interesting to see what like how he said it. Josh Wyatt says, "How about Jimmy Ayuk and McFloppy to New England for Isaiah Wynn? You really think Bill Belichick wants McGlinchey? He has Trent Brown, who's actually good. The Niners didn't want him though. No, I don't think that they're gonna have it. Okay, Mac in a second to Tampa Bay. Jimmy Garoppolo and BA are gone anyway <laughs> with the CMC contract and Bosa coming up. Um, 
Interesting. Interesting. But uh, Mac in a second regardless. to Tampa Ayuk, Bay. Yeah. We talked about it last week, who was going to be the odd man out. And Brandon Ayuk's definitely at the, at the at the top of the totem pole or close um, to it. If you're bringing in Tom Brady, I would keep Brandon Ayuk. I would keep him. Yes. And I, I think he would want you to as well.